Good morning, First Alliance family. It is great that you are joining us this morning for worship. I'm Pastor Paul Smith. And I'm Maria Darby, Director of Guest Services. As much as I wish that I could be greeting you with hugs, handshakes, and high fives, I'm so grateful that we can still gather together virtually as a church family. Before Zeke leads us in song, we have just a few things to share with you. Uh, first of all, you will notice that we have pre-recorded our services. And uh, the reason for this is the following. Uh, we did this for a few reasons. First, in this way, we are not Sunday morning uh, dependent on the internet, uh, relying uh, on going live every Sunday morning through social media is very, very risky. Pre-recorded saves us that risk. Secondly, by pre-recording and then posting it on our, so so on our social media sites and then our websites, uh, gives us almost the ability to reach every single person in the FAC family. We want to make sure that everyone, not just those on social media, can experience worship um, uh, together on Sunday morning. We hope you have been enjoying our daily Connect videos that we're posting to our social media accounts and website every day. We want to stay encouraged, united in prayer, and focusing on how we can love our neighbors at this time. Our children's and youth departments are also putting out great info to minister to kids and parents in this time. So make sure you're checking those social media sites as well. One of the things that's been very encouraging is that we've received several calls and inquiries this week regarding giving, especially giving towards those in need at this time. Thank you so much for caring about this. You are living out the value of being resource generous as a congregation. Yes, we still need to be faithful in giving during this time. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church office, or you can give online as you see. Giving just like always to, F give to the FAC general, general Fund is absolutely critical at this time. Uh, as you will hear, Pastor Zach's going to be sharing with you some information regarding uh, how, during this time, we've identified specific ways in which we're reaching our community. Uh, we need more so than ever the church to be being the church at this time. We also recognize some of you have been deeply and personally affected by the new regulations in our state and have hit very hard times. If this is you, please let us know how we can be praying for you and if there's any tangible ways that we can help you in this time. Email info at FACLEX.com and a staff member will be in touch with you. Well, FAC family, let's worship together. And as we, as always, let's start our time with the scriptures. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8 says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6 says this, I, the Lord God, do not change. And Isaiah 4, 8 says this, though the grass withers and the flowers fail, the word of God endures, the word of God lasts forever. This is the word of God, and we believe it. Let us pray as we open our time of worship together. Sovereign God, thank you for just the capabilities in this time to still gather together and worship you and hear from you in a united way. We pray, Jesus, that you would speak through Zach this morning and um, prepare our hearts to hear the message you have for us. I pray a blessing over each of the homes tuning in, that you would be dwelling in these spaces as we look to worship you this morning. We love you, Jesus. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone.
darkness seeks to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds me. to stand before the throne. Christ alone. Christ alone. Cornerstone. Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm gonna see your victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giants. I know how the story is. Yes, I know how the story I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And you take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good, and you take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good.
I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. What do you say, guys? Snowballs in July? I don't know. Stay tuned after the service and find out why am I talking about snowballs in July. Also, kids, make sure you listen to the sermon today. Pastor Zach is going to be talking about change. Things that change, things that don't change. And you need to count how many times does he use the word change, a word that has the word change in it, changing, unchanging, whatever. You need to count how many times he uses the word change. And if you do, tune in at the end of the service, and I will tell you how you can win a prize for getting the number right or getting it closest. So make sure you tune in afterwards, count the word change, and catch me for snowballs after the service. Welcome First Alliance to our Sunday gathering. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for making time to watch this video. And I know this is unique. I know this is different for a lot of us, but I'm just so excited to, to hear the stories of what's going on in people's living rooms, people crowded around laptops, even um, safely watching this video as you drive to grab maybe groceries or more TP, who knows? Um, during this season, I don't know about you, but I am getting excited about the creativity that COVID-19 is causing the church to have. I'm excited about what this means for people to possibly tune in and hear the good news of Jesus Christ and, and hear the Bible preached because they don't have to sit in a pew or a seat at a church, that they can just tune in. And I'm, I'm very excited about what this could mean. When I was praying about this message, I had this vision. I grew up in Colorado, and I remember in 1997, I was a little kid, we had a blizzard, and everyone would talk about it. You remember the blizzard of 97? And I remember there would be, there was like snow drifts to the top of the roofs of these houses. And I remember going out with my dad, and I would always, I would look for where my dad stepped and I would try to step in his footprint. And if I did that, I wouldn't fall, I wouldn't get cold, I wouldn't tumble into the snow. And I really feel like that is the season we are in as the church. This is uncharted territory. There is so much to, to, to work through, to walk through. And we as the church should be leading the way. We should be leading the way, creating the footprints, because we do have a solid rock, and that's Jesus Christ. We do have the authority and the uh, the strength of God's word. And we, we will be surprised by the people who are tracking behind us, using our steps. They will walk COVID-19 out like they were Christians. And when COVID-19 is done, we'll be able to see new believers. Just like I, as a little boy, was following my father who was trudging through the snow, I believe right now there's a creative opportunity for the church to step into the unknown so our people, the people that we love, our, maybe our parents, maybe our coworkers, are following our lead, following our lead, and we're going to see some really cool things. But it would be very, very immature of me and uh, insensitive of me not to acknowledge as a church, as a pastoral staff, for us to acknowledge that this is wild, like this is hard. For us to not slow down and just, just get excited about these different opportunities would be very unwise. We need to acknowledge the realities of what this virus is doing to those just in our church and those outside. I was talking to a dear friend of mine, and honestly, I was kind of stirred up, and I just talked to him on the phone, and I said, I just need to hear your voice. I just need to debrief, with this, debrief this with someone. 
And we were just talking about the humbling and sobering fact that there's weddings postponed. We want to acknowledge that. I have heard of funerals straight up canceled, that they just buried uh, this person and they weren't able to gather to celebrate. Guys, there's entire classes of high school and college seniors that missed out on their last semester and are maybe or are possibly missing out on their graduation ceremony. There's vacations to that spot you've always dreamt of going that was canceled, and there's visitations for that, from that person you loved that, that might not happen as soon as you hoped. There's events that people have planned years and years for that we just don't know what the next thing is going to be. And for us not to pause and acknowledge our grief, confusion, anger, deep sadness and loneliness would be very unwise. And it does feel kind of silly, because this is a video, for us to acknowledge such a vulnerable, honest thing. But I pray, and I really do hope that you would acknowledge this in your living rooms, in the places where you're meeting. Even, I think the Holy Spirit wants to meet us in our acknowledgement of nodding our heads. Or even if you're in a room of people saying, yeah, me too. Like, I feel that. Because what a better time to pray and open up God's word as a community. What a, what a better way to, to be together because these emotions are real. So we're going to celebrate full living rooms, no more than 10, because we respect the CDC. People joining in from around the nation, around the globe, but we are going to pause and pray and acknowledge. So if you would, maybe it's just raising your hand, even if you're alone or maybe saying out loud, that's me. And we're going to just pause and pray. And we're going to invite the Holy Spirit here at First Lines when we're shooting this video, believing that the Holy Spirit's going to move in the same way whenever you watch this video. So let's pause. Would you acknowledge if you're feeling some of those emotions? It's good for those around you to know. And the Lord honors your vulnerability. Let's pray. Jesus, we acknowledge that you are king. We acknowledge that you're our healer and that you have the power to call it quits on COVID-19. And I am just boldly asking that you would do such a thing, that it would be a great testimony of your strength and power, that nations would uh, have no choice than to ask, what? how did God do that? But until then, however way you see fit, whether it's through empowering doctors, empowering people, Jesus, we pray for the Prince of Peace to be our King in this time. And Jesus, as we open up God's Word, we pray that that Word would be healing balm to our hearts. We pray that truth would reign over lies Jesus, that, that we would see what you might be doing. And Jesus, we know during this time, we don't just need to be people. We need to be spirit-filled people. We don't need to just be leaders in our jobs and our families and our neighborhoods, but we need to be spirit-filled leaders. So we do pray in Jesus' name that you would fill us, Holy Spirit. Fill us to overflowing. For those who are experiencing cancellations, redirects, confusion, changes, we pray that you minister to them right now, that you'd make your presence known, whether through maybe a warmth or a vision or a burst of color, would you make your presence known, Christ Jesus? We pray against cynicism or even just the awkwardness of sitting in a living room watching a video. Jesus, we believe, Holy Spirit, that you would move in this moment. Minister to our people. Minister to our friends and family. Minister to that stranger who logged on to Facebook to watch this video. I believe that you have a mighty work to be done in that person's life. Jesus, we trust you. Father, we trust you. Holy Spirit, we're grateful and we trust you. And we all said, Amen. Amen. So in vulnerability, this last week, I've been fighting fear. I've been fighting the unknown, 
feeling overwhelmed. My wife and I are trying to figure out what we're going to do with our beautiful three-year-old little girl, Eden. But God's presence is real and redirects changes and cancellations. This is ultimately what I want to remind us today. If this was our big idea, that God is here and he is unchanging. If that's the only thing you hear from me today, God is here and unchanging. He's in your cancellations, redirects, and confusion. He's moving. He wants to comfort you. He wants to lull you into his rest. He wants to give you clarity. He wants to give you answers. He wants to be present. That is who he is, and that does not change. I was reminded of these verses. It's kind of sporadic through the word, but Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Malachi 3, 6, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, will not be consumed. Isaiah 40, verse 8, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. And guys, Sue Ellen, the resource director at our partner, Wellington Elementary, pointed me to a beautiful verse, Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 and 18. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines. The produce of the olive fail, and, and the field yield no food. The flock cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will take joy in the God of my salvation. First Alliance Church, visitors, uh, people logging in, will we rejoice in the Lord? Will we take joy in the God of my salvation? Because of this unchanging character, we can feel steady in a time of constant change. We see God's faithful presence and unchanging character throughout the Word of God. We're going to do a, like a fly-through survey of the Word of God. In Genesis, we see God has been forever present. He was present before creation, and we see his power in creation. We see Noah experiencing a crazy redirect, right? He probably never expected he would be on a boat. He would have to build a boat and then be on a boat with a bunch of stinky animals. It was a redirect, but God was present. Moses went from Pharaoh's court to being a murderer, to sand and sheep, to a burning bush. That was quite a change of plans. Then to a parted sea, then to 40 years in a journey and then to a promised land that he could not enter. What a redirect, but God was present. Through the conquests and kings of the Old Testament, we see current re, uh, constant redirects, cancellations, and changes back and forth. But God is present and unchanging. He is faithful. The prophets testify to this unchanging power and passion of his people. And then comes the New Testament, what a redirect, an almost unmet expectation of so many people. A savior would be born of a virgin, raised by a poor Jewish carpenter. But God, Jesus, never changed and was always present in need and for people's needs. Food, he would do. He would, he would multiply. Healing, he would heal. Casting out demons, he was not intimidated. He is forever present and he is unchanging. Now, even the cross, even though Jesus and the prophets foretold and prophesied of this, felt like a substantial redirect and change of plans for these disciples. And it led them into fear. I'm always reminded by John 21 when Peter, in response to the cross and, and the things that happened after the cross, he just went back to fishing. He just went back to fishing. He went back to what he knew. And I'm afraid that during this time of of change and redirect and maybe even fear that we would revert back to our old ways. But would we not? Because God never changes. We serve a God that wants to redirect or direct us in this time. We don't need to hide. God is present and unchanging. Now, what a wonderful redirect too, right? Jesus ascends and the church begins. And of all people, Peter is filled with the Spirit. They're filled with the Spirit, and Peter preaches the first sermon of the church. And it's attitude. It's, it's beautiful. And then you see these redirects. Once again, 
cancellations, redirects, and changes, but God's presence, the Holy Spirit, walks the early church through all these things. But I want to pause at one specific redirect that specifically stuck out to me because of our current situation. This redirect we see in Acts 8.1. Paul, at the time known as Saul, had approved of the, kill, uh, the execution of Stephen. And this is the redirect. Verse, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 says, Saul approved of his execution, and there arose on that, great pers- uh, on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the, except the apostles. What a crazy redirect. They had momentum. They had the king of kings walking with them. They had momentum as the church. They had been filled with the spirit. And all of a sudden comes this persecution. They had been gathered in power. And now they were being scattered. They were getting scattered but in power. Through this persecution being led by a future leader of the church, Saul, there was a scattering of Christ's followers throughout the land. Now let me be clear. COVID-19 is not persecution of the church. But could God be doing a similar work by, by scattering us into our neighborhoods? Would he redeem a virus through gospel saturation of your streets? Gospel saturations of your homes? I was reminded of this illustration that me and a couple friends use at church planning workshops. It's this idea of a chess master. So a chess master, as he trains uh, a chess player, will take away their queen. Because uh, maybe an untrained or immature um, chess player will rely too heavily on the queen. The chess master will take away the queen so they can learn how to play without that, that thing. Guys, isn't that what has happened with, with having to scatter away from our Sunday gra- gatherings into our people's homes? We're operating with many peoples, some pastors included, queen removed in ministry, in our spirituality, in this whole Christian thing. Many people rely heavily on being at a certain location at a certain hour on a Sunday. But such a time as this, family, we serve a good God who is never changing and ever present and is doing things to saturate our city, saturate our neighborhood by scattering mature believers throughout. This reminded me of what's going on in Iran. It's such a tremendous story of what what God's doing in Iran. Uh, I read a headline, Iran has the world's fastest growing church despite no buildings and it's mostly ran by women. Beyonce asks, who runs the world? Girls. There's a documentary called Sheep Among Wolves, Volume 2, that tells the story of this current Iranian awakening. We hear things. These people own no property, no buildings, and no central hierarchical leadership. There's a deep and intense, passionate, and multiplying discipleship discipleship culture that is causing the Iranian regime to lose control, and many Iranians follow Jesus. Guys, this is unbelievable. More more Iranians have come to faith in Jesus Christ in the last 20 years than the last 1,300 years since Islam swept through all of Persia combined. What is God doing? How could we operate without our Sunday gatherings? What could we do now that we couldn't do before? Who might experience God in a new, fresh way during this time? Who might you invite to watch a video that they'll hear the gospel for the first time ever? The first time I heard the gospel, I thought I was going to a house party. First Alliance Church, for such a time as this, people are watching you. They're following you as a Christ follower. In the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. So we're going to get practical. I'm getting excited. But I, wanna, I, I wanted to settle down and look through just a, a, a chunk of scripture. And I wanted to introduce us to uh, the end of a letter between an older, established, accomplished leader and a younger leader. 
The older man was in prison at that time, probably for about four years, but had spent lots of time with this younger man. The younger one was stepping up in a hostile territory. There was, the church was growing, but it was a lot of unknown territory. And this is Paul writing to Timothy. And I don't know about some of you, but I'm, I'm a young leader, and this is unknown territory. And I've had to rely on some older leaders to charge me to, to think certain ways. And we see this, and we're going to spend the rest of our time in 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. So if you have your Bibles, you can flip there. Guys, if our big, if our big idea is God is here and unchanging, my big question for you is how can I partner with an unchanging God during the season of consistent change? How can I partner with an unchanging God during this season of consistent change. We're almost just waiting for the next press conference or the next post or the next article. That's consistent change. But how can we partner with a God that never changes? Let's read 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. I charge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have the itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. They'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. I see these five verses kind of broken into three segments. The first is verses one and two. We as Christians have the invitation to be the leading voice during this time. We are charged in the presence of God in Christ. And it, this is kind of saying like, as God and Jesus as my witness, preach, preach. And a perfect example, my wife is not a preacher like me, but she preaches by her example. She preaches by her steadiness and confidence right now in the medical field. How can you preach we charge you to preach. What are you posting? What are you responding to? How do you respond when all the baby wipes are gone? That's how we preach. We we're supposed to do that in and out of season. What a time it is to preach. It also goes into this list of things. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. What I believe this, this is really challenging, Paul challenging Timothy, but challenging us as well, to allow the word of God to be the content of our conversations. Not to, to correct, bully, but for it to be the content, for, for the word of God to bear on the lives of the people. Let's not treat the word as it's just filled with sweet sayings, interesting ideas, or quick fixes or sweet things to post. The word has power. It's authority, especially in a time like this. Now, I, I had to kind of ask and search, what does it mean for, for it to bear on the lives of the people? This, this means that it's imposed. Like, if the word were to be lined up against our lives, how does it match up? Are we living uh, according? How does, how does it affect how we how we walk this out. And this is a question for us. How does God's word bear on COVID-19? Maybe in your living room after this message, you would answer that question. How does God's word bear on COVID-19? Because that is a challenge of ours. Now next, verses three and four. Paul warns Timothy of a time that will come that I believe we are currently in. There'll be a time that people will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires, they'll go look for something else. Will not endure. 
That means they will not carry the weight. It's a weighty teaching. It's a weighty truth. They can't withstand the weight of it. So they'll go look for something else they can withstand. We see this during COVID. We see this during COVID. But we also see it in our culture today. Sexuality, money, serving, marriage. If we cannot endure the sound teaching of the Bible, we'll go somewhere else to find something we can endure. Guys, we cannot do this. God's word is powerful and authoritative. And it is such a time for us to be steady and strong with what we believe. Verse 5. Verse 5. It starts with, as for you. I just want to say that. That's a contrast with the people that he's previously been mentioning. He's saying, as for you, be sober-minded, endure, do the work of evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Now this is where we get practical, where I think we can really lean in. First Alliance Church, would we be sober-minded? Would we be watchful of our mind and our thoughts? It reminds me of 2 Corinthians 10.5. In the ESV it says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we take that every thought captive and obey it, uh, make it obey to Christ. I love the word captive because it's wrestling to the ground to make submit. I don't know about you, but I've had some thoughts this last couple weeks that I've had to like, get some grit in my head and like wrestle it to the ground and submit it to what I know about God. I love, actually this might be the only time you hear Zach Mirkreeves preach out of the King James Version, but I think, it's, I think it's really good. Same verse, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth, yeah I said exalteth, it's, it exalteth itself against the knowledge, above the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I, I love this picture. I love that he uses the word imaginations because our imaginations right now can run rampant. But we take those things that have placed themselves over, try to cover what we know about God, and we put it into captivity. And you know who guards them, who protects us, who's the prison guard? That's Christ Jesus. So we take those thoughts, we put it into a cage, and we give the keys to Jesus. Let's be sober-minded. Next, endure. We know what that means. It's a, quite a time for godly endurance. But don't try to be a stud muffin. Don't try to do it on your own. Log into something. Ask for help. Call us. If you're tired, get someone to run with you during this time. Now next, do the work of, of an evangelist. This is a very uniquely time to be evangelistic. Let's be aware and intentional. Some really practical ways. Practice sharing your story, your testimony during this time. Maybe you do that with your family. Pray for someone in the name of Jesus that you normally wouldn't do. People are more open to prayer right now than maybe ever before. Pray in the name of Jesus. Ask someone how they're doing. This has been something that's been very fruitful evangelistically, is asking the question, if someone knows you love Jesus, and they know what you think of Jesus. What if you said, if Jesus is who I think he is, and he was sitting in our living room right now, what would you ask of him? What would you ask of him? That opens up a tremendous conversation. And then you can pray for whatever they, their answer. So if they say, why would COVID-19 do this? Let the Holy Spirit answer that question. Why, why have I had to cancel this or redirect this? Let the Holy Spirit answer the question. And next, fulfill your ministry. I want to emphasize your ministry. Would you take time to ask the question what your ministry is during the time of COVID-19? Explore, ask, pray, and be faithful to fulfill your ministry because as First Alliance, we will be faithful to fulfill our ministry. I'm excited to see on the other side of COVID-19 and be able to say, guys, First Alliance, we fulfilled our ministry. So how we're gonna fulfill our ministry, what we have so far. There's kind of two parts, and this is what I've been working on for just the next, the last week or so. And we realized that this might be a marathon. 
We're not trying to just get everything done right now. There's kind of two pieces. The first is equipping individuals and homes. We want to equip individuals to be evangelistic and outward-minded during this time. We're going to start posting uh, more tools, ways to love your neighbors, ways to invite to an online uh, gathering, ways that you could maybe utilize your living room, no more than 10, but utilize your living room so someone might hear the good news of Jesus Christ that would, would be uh, opposed to maybe join you at church. Like, if you need me to pay for bacon, email me. I will pay for bacon so you can invite someone to your house. Okay. And we also, we want to equip individuals and homes, but also kind of in just the impact and kind of just crisis response, we've first checked on our partners. We're checking with our global partners, but we're also checking in our local partners. I realize that there's tons of things that need to be done. We realize that there's tons of ways that we can serve. Right now, in, in this time, we're going to prioritize our current partners. And as a team, we've been praying through that, and we're going to prioritize our two local school partners, Booker T. and Wellington Elementary. We're going to focus on medical professionals. So if you're a medical professional and you'd like us to equip you with, with some ways to love on the people on your floor for, so they know that not only you, but your church are behind them and we're grateful for their hard work, please reach out to me. And also we have a unique opportunity that we've decided to, to free up some ways that we can serve other churches. We as a church uh, have some things in place that, that we're not uh, worried about some of the other things that maybe some churches in our city or in our district, the CMA district, um, are worried about. But as First Alliance, we want to be a part of uh, crisis response. And that will be in direct partnership with Brian Scott and Mark Searing, uh, the staff of Ohio Valley District. So what would it look like for us to fill, fulfill our ministry? We'll preach boldly through our responses, actions, and words. We'll cling to the word of God and encourage and even introduce and teach those around us to do the same. And we would be sober-minded, taking our thoughts captive, endure well, do the work of evangelists, and that's how we fulfill our ministry. Now in closing, I have to confess that I've written this message about four times. And about that third time, I was sitting with my beautiful daughter, Eden, and she was watching Frozen 2. Can I get an amen from all the parents that Frozen 2 is on Disney Plus? Amen. Praise the Lamb. Okay, so Frozen 2. Early in the movie, there's this guy named Pavi. And if I said that wrong, shoot me an email. Pavi is a stone troll. I get it. You're hearing this at church right now. Okay. Pavi, stone troll king, and Anna are talking about the upcoming journey that Anna is going to take. And this sweet little rock troll king drops a wisdom bomb that I think is a good word for us. He says, when one can see no future, all one can do is the next right thing. Pavi, good word, brother. So First Alliance, brothers and sisters, what's our next right thing to fill the ministry? My hope is that each one of us is a visible, courageous, and wise outpost of the kingdom of God where we are placed. Let me say that again. We are a visible, courageous, and wise outpost of the kingdom of God where we are placed. The gospel is bigger than COVID-19, and we will see new believers because of this coronavirus. I believe it. Jesus is Savior of the world, even during COVID-19. So First Alliance, I commission you to do your right next thing, to be the outpost of God in your neighborhoods. Let me pray. Jesus, we thank you once again, that you are king. And we experience your kingship at this time. We pray not only that you would be Lord of our minds, helping us take our thoughts captive, you'd be the Lord of our hearts, controlling emotions, ministering to us, pastoring us. 
that you're the king and lord of this church. We are just all assistant pastors to the great senior pastor, Jesus Christ. You love this church. You love our city. You love this region. You love the globe. So would we pause and just remember today that you are unchanging and always present. Would you give our people boldness and courage to reach out if they need help? Would you give us wisdom and discernment of how we can lead ourselves and our families to stay healthy? And Jesus, would we not be, uh, would we not retreat, but creatively advance the kingdom during this time? Would we be commissioned to be the visible, courageous outposts of the kingdom of God where we're placed? We say this in Jesus' name.
Snowballs. We don't have snowballs in July, do we? Have you ever made a snowball in July? Maybe you've shaved off ice or something. I don't know. These are fake, obviously. But Pastor Zach just talked about things that change and things that don't change. And we know God never changes. That's just an amazing thing to us. We read in the Bible. He talked about it. And things change all around us. And I know for you all, this last week has been full of change. Changing in school, changing in routine, changing in what seems normal. And right now we're almost like in the middle of a season change, right? It's getting warmer, thankfully, and the days are getting longer. You wouldn't find snowballs in July. You would want to find sun and summer in July. And even in the ways that God makes the seasons change and the world keeps going, we know that he's in control. So some things need to change. And some things, we don't want them to change. We don't want God to stop being all-powerful and all-loving and all-knowing, do we? So when you think about the seasons changing, when you notice outside the weather getting warmer and the sun shining, be reminded that some things do change, and that's okay. God is there. He's never changing. And even when things change, He knows that, and it doesn't take Him by surprise. So as you're getting used to new routine, as you're getting used to having school at home, as you're getting used to not getting to see your friends as much, remember, none of the change, none of these new things take God by surprise. He's always unchanging. He's always there for you. So remember that and ask Him. Ask Him to help you when it frustrates you, when it makes you angry, when it makes you sad, when it makes you just wonder what is going on. Ask Him to help you because He knows it all and He loves you so much and He will never change that. All right, so that's the snowballs in July. Did you count how many times Pastor Zach said the word change in his sermon? If you did, you need to email me your number and it's kids at facelex.com. It's very easy. Have your mom or dad email me kids at facelex.com. Email me that number, and the first person that I get who is closest without going over, I'm going to mail you a surprise in the mail. So make sure you send me an email, kids at factlex.com. How many times did Pastor Zach say the word change in today's sermon? We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Wow, what a pointed and powerful message that we heard from God through Zach. There are so many truths that deserve to be highlighted from that message. But the thing that stuck out to me the most is that, that primary powerful question of his. How can you partner with an unchanging God in times of consistent change? If God is ever present, as Zach said, his character is unchanging and we can feel steady in this time of, of great uncertainty. He's in your, your reschedules and your redirects. He's in the cancellations and the closings. He's, he's in this with us. So the question that we can now ask ourselves is, is what can we do now that we couldn't do before? You know, how can those in your social circle, on your street, in your neighborhood, hear the gospel because of this temporary suspension of our weekly gatherings? How can you play a role in creatively advancing the kingdom of God? Ask yourselves that. Start strategizing, knowing that God is there with you. He's, he's still on mission. He's still active. Uh, he's still seeking out and rescuing the lost. And just to reiterate, how can you partner with an unchanging God in times of consistent change? Think on this as you navigate this new and difficult season. Now, um, there are a few pieces of important information that we wanted to be sure to communicate to you all about what's happening at FAC during this time and what will happen moving forward. So first things first, um, be sure to continuously check out our website, www.facelex.com. You can click the banner at the top of the homepage and you'll see that day's uh, encouraging word. The same information will also be dispersed and posted on our Facebook and Instagram pages if you prefer to check in there, but keep a close tab on what's on our website. Second, if you have kids in our children's middle school or high school areas, be sure that you're following those departments on social media as they will be encouraging and equipping your families during this time. They're putting out some absolutely fantastic content 
for you and your kids. Be sure to take advantage of that. Third, as we move forward, we're looking to bring more and more ministry to you through virtual means. Uh, we'll continue to update you on that as we know specifically how that will work and what that will look like. Um, it's so important that we continue to connect to God and each other during this time, and we want to make sure to facilitate that as best we can. Next, uh, we remain here to serve you. Please, please reach out to us if you have needs or want to help during this time. Uh, we're consistently thinking through different ways to serve you guys in the midst of the situation. You're on our minds, and we want to help you in any way that we can. Also, thank you for your faithful giving to our church, as it will enable us to be generous to others and their need and share the love, hope, and provision of Jesus during the season. And finally, we will continue these virtual services for the time being. So please join us next week uh, for another online service. Pastor Paul will be preaching from Judges, um, specifically on Gideon, so you won't want to miss that. Uh, we love you and miss you all. We hope that you have a great week. God bless.